Hiya, welcome to LSB Feasters Radio Air Check Channel. And today, we're going to New York with Scott Shannon on 101 WCBS FM New York. What is there you can say about Shannon? He is a legend. He's done it all. He's been everywhere. Legendary calls are on his resume. WMAK Nashville, WPGC Washington. Uh, oh, of course, WRBQ AM and FM in Tampa Q105 where he was on the Q Zoo. And of course, Z100, WHTZ, New York, where he was on the Z Morning Zoo. Uh, he spent almost 40 years doing morning radio in New York. Of course, WPLJ and CBS FM. There was that one year when he went to Los Angeles to do pirate radio, but other than that, he spent all his time in New York during those 40 years, and he decided he would retire in 2022. This air check features Scott Shannon's very first show on 101 WCBS FM. 752 as we go back to the star phone, ladies and gentlemen. One of the greatest disc jockeys to ever crack a microphone. As a matter of fact, he worked many years right here at CBS FM. I'm talking about the cuz. Yeah, Cousin Brucey. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> Can I win the thousand dollars? That's what I want to do. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? Very good, very good. Hey, you played a great song. You, you woke me up. I love it. Eight days a week, I love it. That's and this got is it. your day. This is your day this week, Scott. I got to tell you what. The, the people here are phenomenal. Yeah, I, let, me, let me tell you, we trained them very well. Yeah. <laughs> How long were you at CBS FM? I think uh, a two hundred and three hundred one years. All right. Good. <laughs> now you you were very busy last month because you had uh, you had to celebrate the fiftieth anniversary of the Beatles rolling into the USA. Yeah, it was a, an amazing couple weeks. Let me tell you, amazing couple weeks, and a lot of it started at uh, C Beatle S F M. Well, you actually started on uh, ten ten wins here, right back when it was the top forty station. That's right. Uh, 1010 wins New York. We had the bong, if you remember. Oh, yeah. And the, uh, w, and the WA Beatles C days. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, great days. So I, was, I was there 20 years, Scott, with CBS FM. Really. Wow. And really wonderful time. I just want to uh, give you the best advice I can. All right. Give it to so, me. Relax. Do what you want to do and don't listen to anybody. <laughs> that's, I think I did that on my last job, and that's why I'm on this job. <laughs> Thank no, you. Cousin, cousin Jim will understand what I meant. Please, please, have a great time. I just want to wish you the very, very best. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for Dan. I'm happy for everybody over there. Just give, have our, a great time. give our best to Darlene Love. Cousin Bruce, he talks there day 12 noon, 60s on 6, Sirius XM. Get a little plug in there for you. Mm. Thank you, buddy. Okay, Scott, the best. Cousin Brucey! Yeah. Exactly 754. There is more to come. More famous people and not so famous people. Okay. And of course, the $1,000 double play on the way from your CBS FM with Joe in real time traffic. Belt Parkway westbound Erskine Street. <laughs> Wind time right now is nine minutes after the hour of seven o'clock, and that's Bobby the D, Bobby Darren for you, and Murray the K here on a swinging soiree. Hey, John. <laughs> Are admitted free. Now, once again, here's Alan Free. Thank you, Stan Burns. And now, here we go. The next section of our rock and roll party is brought to you by Friendly Frost Stores, New York's number one home appliance and television retailer. The Go Go music of WABC, the biggest hits of the day, plus the biggest hits of recent years, presented by radio's most popular air personalities, the All American team of WABC. Herb Oscar Anderson, Cousin Bruce Morrow, Charlie Greer, Bob Lewis, and yours truly, Dan Ingram. You stay with 77 Radio, All American Go Go Radio, WABC. It's eight minutes after 6 a.m., August the 2nd, 1983. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, radio station WHTZ signs on the air. Signing on the air, this is WHTZ, 
Newark. It's time to wake up. The Sea Morning Zoo on C100. Time. This is Scott and Todd in the morning. I just mentioned uh, the date today, Friday, February 7, 2014. You go back to June of 1991 when Scott and Todd did their first broadcast together. Mm-hmm. And today is our last broadcast together. No, what? It's our last broadcast together. That's it for me. Out the door. That's it. 23 years. We're coming up on 23. Yeah, almost 23 would have been. Almost 23, 23 years. Summer. And what was it for Leno? 22? Yeah. We don't have all the like special guests. Oprah's not going to be in here this morning. No. Jack Black. We wanted to do that, but you didn't want any of them. <laughs> so you want nothing. What we were going to do, uh, Todd and, and Monk and Coop planned out this whole, that whole week like a swan song. Right. And that just... I, I said, I don't want to do I that. I can't do that. And we want to thank you, obviously, all of us. Right. And you have a Absolutely. lot of the staff in here. And, you know, you you set the bar in this business, Scott, and, and none of us will ever forget that. And we've learned so much and we'll continue, obviously, to stay in touch. And you'll keep us posted on, on what's happening with you. But, but we just sincerely, from the bottom of our hearts, I speak for all of us when I say thank you. Thanks for showing us the way. And... Uh, you know, you'll always have a place here. So it's been a great ride, my friend. That's all I got. So one more time, I gotta say thank you and bye, Buckaroos. And now the tradition continues. Serving the universe from the greatest city in the world. Scott Shannon in the morning on WCBS FM and HD1 New York. Always on radio.com. A little bit after 8 a.m. Monday, March the 3rd, 2014. Time to turn the page. Shannon on the radio one more time. Welcome to New York's legendary 101.1. CBS FM with my new crew, Deborah Rodriguez. Hello. Hey, Deb. News and entertainment sleaze. Oh, Mis- yes. Mr. G <laughs> with his exclusive forecast always. Right or wrong, he's with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Our show producer, Louie Louie, proud, proud graduate of Staten Island College. Yes. And of course, an old friend, a familiar face. Fellow that I've worked with for, I guess, 23 years. Wow. Yeah, 20, yeah. Wow. Mr. Joe Nolan, I told him when I first moved back to New York to be on PLJ that I always wanted him to do the traffic, and little did I know <laughs> <laughs> that it worked out fine. It's yeah, it all worked out fine. Most of the time. Now, for those of you who don't know Joe, he's born, died in a wool jersey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we had a tradition every year we would kick off the summer at the Jersey Shore. Okay. Where we go? Seaside Heights? Point Pleasant. Point Pleasant, New Jersey. Out there, people would come from all over the Jersey Shore. We have like eight, ten, oh, twelve thousand people. Sometimes twelve thousand, yeah. Wow. Uh, and we crazy. Had, and we had a little thing called the Summer Blast Off. So today... We're going to kind of switch it around and do the CBS FM Shannon first show blast off. (laughs) And here he is, your very own Joe Nolan. Never in the history of New York rock and roll radio in New York City has there been such an event. Today is the return of a young man who started in radio by having a station in his basement. Young man. His (laughs) listeners were his friends. He He used to make them stay and listen. Then after school and the Army, real radio jobs in Memphis, Nashville, Hotlanta, D.C., Tampa, and finally New York City. 
I remember being a baby traffic reporter at 6.08 a.m. on August 2nd, 1983, listening to the very first sounds of a new guy from Tampa on a small Jersey station that used to play my parents' music. Ugh. Suddenly, I of the Tiger came on, and the voice was saying, we're going worst to first. Yeah, right. <laughs> 74 days later, that pea shooter was a flamethrower at the top of the gorilla building. The zoo is number one in the whole world noticed. Then 22 years later, he started a morning show that became a New York City institution. You've seen him on TV in dresses and with monkeys. <laughs> Incredible bits like the horrible scopes and a bank run where a guy almost died. Ah, oh, come on. Legendary remotes from all over the world, including the incredible Fiesta Hut in Paramus, New Jersey. For 21 years, I was shoulder to shoulder with this giant of the business. Yeah. And two things have always been constant in my 22-year-old Connor's life. Marty Brodeur was always the goalie of the New Jersey Devils. Not much longer. And Scott Shannon worked with Dad. Well, Connor, everything is right with the world again. So welcome back to the New York City Airwaves, an absolute American radio legend. The big boss with the big hot sauce. The number one pronounced decatur in all of the land. If I'm lying, I'm dying, and Mona Lisa was a man. Westchester, Connecticut, New Jersey, Scott's back. We're back. And Bruce is on CBS FM. I got to do a shout out yeah. to a young lady who listens to the show. And she is a, a dear, I don't know her that well, but she's a big listener. Kathy Sharnikoff from AEG. She's with us today. And ladies and gentlemen, in the studio, mm -hmm. one of the most respected broadcasters in the country, Mr. Tim Sheldon. Yay, Tim. Oh, yeah. News Radio 88. Can you get over there? It's a big day when Tim Sheldon shows up. He doesn't, right? he doesn't usually he doesn't come down here to steerage. Never. He I stays heard you talking there. about Dan before in uh, in the, the with Deborah Norville and Dan Mason getting the good seat. You get the good seat now. Occasionally. <laughs> now he heads up. You've got. I went down to visit him because I'm a big fan, but he doesn't ever go on a radio. He is a great. Report. Oh yeah, Tim. He's yeah. the best. But that's thrown right. off the radio. That's he below did. him now. He can't right? do that. He taught me everything didn't I you know. Do, didn't you do the giant Super Bowl parade? I did everything. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I was listening one day to '88. I think that when the Giants won the Super Bowl back when they were good. And <laughs> hey, now. they're going to be good again. Yeah, but they've had. They just had a couple of little bumps in the road there. Mm. But and I I heard a voice. I didn't recognize it, and it was him. Right? I, I emailed him. I said, you ought to do that more often. No, I don't want it. I, I can't work that hard. <laughs> he was like an around-the-world reporter yeah, for a while. He this was? Guy, oh, yeah. Yeah, he worked oh. for the ABC Radio Network oh, for a while. Foreign Crap. correspondent. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. no, I, have a, I have a tape with you um, and I uh, from uh, the Oklahoma City bombing. Yeah. When we remember... But way back then, you, I was a reporter at that point, and we went on the air together. And well, that's a buzz kill. Yeah, huh? <laughs> but I mean, that's yeah, we you, were on though. Huh? You, we were on, and and you bring important stories to people, and I'm really proud to have you in the hallways of this building. I'm very it's... happy to be here. And by the way, I got to say thanks to the uh, friends of O and A for uh, recruiting new listeners for our show. Like wow. I said, I don't know how long we're going to be able to hold on to it. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> but for Jeez. a while. Did anybody, I didn't stay up to watch it last night, but Jimmy Kimmel had the wacky mayor of Toronto. Oh, Close that's that door, right. Tim. I got a bunch right? of people. Yeah, he had Rob Ford. He was booked to do the Jimmy Kimmel show. Mm -hmm. And when he flew into LAX, mm -hmm. Jimmy Kimmel's got the little. Uh, little a uh, chauffeur hat on, mm -hmm. and he's you know those little oh, things you no. put five bucks in you and you pick up your luggage. Yeah, he's got the sign that says Ford J.K. Limos, and he's picking him up at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob Ford has no idea who he is. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> and then there's another great video of Jimmy Fallon. Sometimes you get those confused. They're yeah. both on late night TV. Uh -huh. He had to go to Chicago and take a dip in Lake Michigan. In his suit. Yeah, he wore a suit and a tie and everything because that was a deal he made with Rahm Emanuel. If he would do The Tonight Show, he would do a polar plunge. Wow. So he made it. Hmm. He's probably sick for tonight, but yeah. I guess, man. Jeez. And everybody else had like parkas and stuff on. Not him. He, <laughs> no. he was just out there in his suit and his tie and all that. So. Wincing. It's exactly 822. I got to tell you what. We got a bunch of people. 
who are scheduled to check in this morning, and there's going to be a log jam at the last you know it. hour and a half. You know that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So hang on. We'll try to get through it. It's a big show on CBS FM with Joe in real time. Southbound Garden State Parkway, 149. No Kardashian news. I'm so disappointed. You know I never missed them. I said the exact quote. He didn't print the whole thing. Yeah. The exact quote was, uh, no Kardashian news unless, God forbid, one of them happens to pass away. Oh, never. They're my favorites. CBS FM, New York's greatest hits. You know, I was telling Joe um, over the weekend, it's kind of weird because for as long as I've been in New York, Mm -hmm. a lot of people you run into, you know, like casual radio listeners or people, they thought I worked here anyway. Really? (laughs) Yeah, because you remember Bob Shannon worked here. Yes, right. Yes, of it. course. Bob did middays. So, yeah, you're the guy, you're the Shannon guy on CBS. No, I don't work at CBS FM. I know you do. They would argue with me. I said, I know where the hell I work. Leave me alone. In case you are just tuning in, I'm not the guy that was here before. Dan no. Taylor is his name, and he will be on at 10 this morning. Mm-hmm. And he was so nice to let me have, well, he was nice to let me have his chair. Did he have a choice? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, well, yeah, he could have walked out. Yeah, we were happy. We want him to stay. Yeah. Right. We do. He's a gentleman and, and a professional. And he did. So we got him. Um, remember a while ago I asked, you know, exactly what part of town we're in? Mm-hmm. I got an, an email. I just checked my uh, text and email. I got a note from a friend of mine who used to work here, Brian Thomas. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And he said, oh, forgot, I forgot where we are. It's not Soho, though. Right. It's Hudson Square, technically. Right. That's what so, they call it. Thank you, Brian. And a big shout-out to Joe Peppy from Peppy Motors. Oh, oh Joe. You can't, you can't nice. buy a car in Westchester without no. going to one of his places. Right? No. Yeah. And uh, I got a nice note from Bob and Annie Amato, two new listeners. Great. For CBS yes. FM. Excellent. Welcome, Bob and Annie. And the official Shannon family um, priest. Father Dan O'Reilly. Oh, how's ah. Father Dan doing? Father Dan's doing great. Good. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, priest that we happen to know. A real father. We were really uh, remarried in the Catholic. Trish and I were remarried in the Catholic Church. Ah. And he performed the... Uh, I was Catholic. Okay. She was late coming to the Party. to the altars. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's that way. Now, I don't know. Uh, Mr. G, did you see the story... Over the weekend, about the guy from Mississippi. Did you happen to catch that? What was that? The fellow who, he's an older guy. He's about 78 years old, and he was at his home, and he died, mm-hmm. they thought. Oh, oh wait a yeah. second. Yes. I heard he, that he one. He got up in the bag? Yes. yes. <laughs> they, they, they sent the coroner over to the house. They put him in a bag, and they zipped it up and shipped him over to the morgue. Mm-hmm. And the coroner <laughs> pronounced him dead. Mm. Right? He goes to the morgue, and the guy's getting ready to embalm him. Mm. And he, I guess he's getting the juice ready, ready to shoot the oh, juice. Man. Yeah. And he hears a noise, and he turns around, and there's a guy kicking in the body oh, my bag. God. It was like oh, a whole boy. day later, right? The funeral home manager, Brian <laughs> Porter, says, he wasn't dead. Long story short. <laughs> Heck of a memorial service. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the guy, the guy had to call over the house and say, and this cousin answered, he's not dead. What do you mean he's not dead? I <laughs> saw him. You pronounced him dead. Don't they take a pulse? Isn't there some like definitive thing? Where they... Wow. Well, they say his uh, he had a pacemaker, and I guess the pacemaker <gasps> stopped running. That's right. I guess he had the wrong batteries in there uh, or something. And then it jump-started on its own. Yeah. Wow. I can't even understand that, man. Jeez. Imagine that. Imagine hey. the guy who pronounced him dead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, you remember when you were a kid, you used to always dream about what would happen, you know, if you get to, if you ran a coffin. See, yes. that's not really going to happen. Yes. And the dirt and uh, the whole... Oh, I would God. imagine. Oh, I yeah. would imagine back in the old days that might happen. Yep. Right. Oh, it is geez, exactly Louise. 834, and you can probably tell it. It's my first day on the air here at CBS FM, and checking in on the CBS FM star phone is a fella that I did not know when I first moved to New York. Hmm. And it's a, a long story on how we finally met, but he has a little band mm. that plays from <laughs> town to town. Every so often, a couple of places here and there. Good morning, John Bon Jovi. Good morning, Scott Shannon. How are you, pal? Oh, my, my.
my, my. Hey, by the way, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank yes. you. It was yes. a nice one. What did the family do for you? Have a little party? Yeah, a little party. <laughs> we went out to lunch, and I went to lacrosse practice with one of my kids, and we watched the Oscars like the rest of America. Yeah, wow. you, you've you turned into super dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like well. They're trying to get me <laughs> into that box. Doesn't it look bad for you? You know, yeah, you're at the you're at the lacrosse game and you and you don't want to text you. And I know you're you've run your empire. You got you're a businessman, but you got to put it aside for a few minutes, right? Absolutely. Kids are the priority, man. I'm 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 retired now. <laughs> you're not. I know you too well. You're not retired. <laughs> It's a funny story because um, how we started out together. When I first came to New York, I worked at uh, Z100. Yep. And I had a, a music director, uh, a, a young kid named Frankie Blue. And every time I and I didn't know New York radio, and if I'd be driving around, I'd flip the stations and I hear a song that I liked. I would call Frankie Blue on the cell phone and say, I don't know what this is, find out what this is, and get in my office tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I was listening to WAPP. Oh, oh boy. That? And there was a song on there that I thought sounded pretty cool. So I called Frankie up and I said, What that, that, that song? Something about a girl running away. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I never heard it before. It's a great song. So he checked it, coming back and said, You don't want anything to do with that. That was from the WAPP Homegrown Album. I guess you guys sent a tape in. Is that how it worked, John? I was, uh, this was 1983. I went to, um, knocked on the door. I mean, the way I went about getting a record deal is very different than most. Um, I'd sent my tapes around through, you know, various representatives to record companies and didn't get any answers from anybody. I was frustrated, and then I thought to myself, who is the loneliest man in the music business? And, <laughs> <laughs> and my head rang back, and it said, the DJ. There you go. And this, um, this brand-new station was starting out in, just outside of Manhattan. And, uh, and they were so new, they didn't have a receptionist. So I knocked on the DJ's window. Here, come, <laughs> here, here comes big hair. Yeah, got, got, his, uh, got the DJ's attention. He shushed me, you know, until he came out of the break. And uh, and I, I talked to him after his uh, shift and uh, played him the song. They told me about a homegrown record they were thinking about putting together to endear them to the community. I was against it initially because the last thing I wanted to do was have a singles deal, you know, on a homegrown record. And, right. And, uh, and, and then subsequently started getting airplay across the country. And... Uh, Dropped out of their contest and signed with what is now Island Def Jam, then Polygram, the same label for 30 years. And I got to tell you, uh, people don't know this uh, that follow music. And when you go on the road, you a lot of times you can go anywhere in the country and sell out, but you can sell out all over the world. People don't realize that. Yeah, well. We've been doing it a long time, you know, and, and right from the get-go, we just always knew that you had to see the whole world. You couldn't just play here. And that was, that was especially at a time when people didn't tour the world. So we'd go to Africa. We'd go to Asia. We'd go to Australia. We weren't afraid of going anywhere, you know, and, uh, and it worked because 30 years later, we're still... Uh, well, you don't wear out your welcome in those places either. You're very particular about it. You know, John's not just like one. Of, he's not like one of these dummy rock and roll stars. He's right. very, he likes to sit down and think about it and map it out and do it just a little bit differently than than other people. Well, I don't know if it's the case as much as you know. Just this is what we love to do, Scott. So we went everywhere. We went anywhere. Mm. Well, there's also you're also you have another photo book coming out, right? What's it called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work. Because <laughs> that's what we do. We work. So it it's what's what's the book about? Just the tour? Uh, we had a tour photographer that was out. He's um, a great guy named David Bergman who did a lot of Sports Illustrated covers, things like that. But um, he he's been out on the road and really got a bunch of intimate things that have never been seen before. So over the course of these last two tours. Uh, he had to beg and plead to convince me to, you know, let him be that close to, to the organization, and uh, and we let him, and, uh, and and then improved the book. So it's a big book. It's like one of those big, you know, 
I don't know, two and a half feet high, two feet wide. Kind of big you can actually, table. I think you can use it for your workout. You want to build yeah, up Yeah, most band. definitely. <laughs> it can be the coffee table. It's not a coffee table book. It is the coffee table. <laughs> now, one of your biggest fans is with me today, Joe Nolan from Jersey. What's up, Joe? Hey, John. How are you, man? Let, you know what? I, the, I was at the all. Joe, you got to turn your microphone to the phone, brother. Uh oh, I don't. He, they don't. They don't have me up. They don't have you up. Go mm -hmm. ahead. Okay. Uh, they got it now. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I was at all, three of the four Meadowland shows when you opened up the new stadium. Oh yeah. That first night, that was magic, man. I, I, it was just unbelievable. You were. It, it was so obvious how into it you were. The crowd was crazy. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. They're well, always playing in that that. That building, whether it was the old Giant Stadium or the new MetLife, was always going to be a special place for us. And uh, you know, it's a place that you—it was beyond your wildest dreams when you were a kid. The idea of playing the Meadowlands was right. a big deal. And then being chosen to, to open the stadium, and then we came back a couple times on this tour, and you know, it's—it's it's been fantastic. When you think about ten nights at the Prudential Center to open it, six nights so far at the MetLife, these are these are. Records that are going to stand for quite a long time. I was at that opener at the Prudential Center, too. Yeah. <laughs> he, you can, John, you can pick any opener. He's been there. <laughs> and by, by the way, you know, I, I want to go back for a second and talk about your kids. Your oldest son, Jesse, yeah. was a walk-on for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish football team this past season. Yeah. And I, I didn't see it, but... I read somewhere that when you saw Jesse run onto the field with the Notre Dame football team yeah. for the first time, and you're not an easy crier. No. It, the, the tears came. The, the history, of course. You know, my, unbelievable. It, what dad wouldn't be ecstatic, <sighs> you know, to see his son uh, fulfill his dreams. And Jess was able to fulfill one of his uh, by making the Notre Dame football team. And, That's a tough team to get yeah, anywhere near. Yeah, yeah, and he uh, he works very hard at it, you know, and maybe this year, the next year, I mean, he'll he'll get a little playing time, but, you know, this year he's got a lot of splinters and experience, and that's okay. He, he made the team. You going to get back into arena ball anytime soon? No, I gave up. The arena <laughs> You're done, was, huh? Uh, you know, I had a good time on that arena stuff. team. It was good. Philadelphia Soul. Yeah, we won a championship. Yeah, it was I know. a lot of fun. The team's back. It exists, but I, I'm no longer part of it. Out of there. Well, John, thank you so much for taking time out today to check in. I don't think any station in New York plays more Bon Jovi music than this one. Well, Scott, it's because of you. And that's why, you know, when I was driving down the turnpike recently reading the paper and heard about your move, I reached out immediately because you were there from before the beginning, Scott. And whether it was in New York or Los Angeles or back to New York, you're a dear and old friend. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing you in the mornings over here at CBS. And I just want you to know that you're loved. And I, I really appreciate everything you've ever done for us. Love you, John. Thank you, man. All the best, everybody. Let's go back to the beginning, ladies and Gentlemen, Bon Jovi on CBS FM. Scott Shannon in the morning is on CBS FM. I've only worked here one day. And I already know about the thousand dollar double play. You just heard two songs back to back by the Rolling Stones. Caller 101 right now. 800 367 1101 wins a thousand bucks. See? Now you know, Deborah. I know. I've been here for years and I've You I weren't here about that, 29 yeah. years and you know what the hell's going on. Now I right? do. Yep. It's, uh, it's my new broadcast crew, Deborah Rodriguez, who doesn't do contests. No. <laughs> I will now. I will now. You got to know everything going on because okay. every so often. Yeah. You'll get used to this when you get a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Every so often, <laughs> there's a little, something goes blank. Yeah, I get that. I get that. And yeah, I need help sometimes. Okay. I don't mind. I'm on the contest thing. There's no, it. there's huh. no sin in admitting to that. We got Mr. G, his exclusive <laughs> forecast. You have the, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, G? I need help all the time. I'm right? just. 
I just look confused, so it's easy. <laughs> and we got Joe Nolan with CBS Traffic Watch. Mm -hmm. And Louie Louie, a Louis. graduate of Staten Island College. Yeah. Now, Louie, you never have really talked much on the radio. I got to have a mic. Who's that girl? Who's, who's that girl? Let's not there? get carried away. What do you do? Come here. Oh. Come here. <laughs> that girl. What are you doing in here? Uh, your, I'm here for What's your name? Iganis. What? Iganis. 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 Yes. Where are you from? I'm from uh, Jersey, from for the Amboy. All right, good. What do you do around here? Um, I, I help, see you have a card. I help with the um, the contests. Oh, you you answer the phone? Um, no? No, no. I call the winners. The phone. Oh, you call them. You're in the contest department. Yes. Oh. What do you do when you're not doing contests? Um... Just hang, up. <laughs> hang around. Think about more contests. All right. All right. Well, I'm working all the time, working for everybody. You here. do a lot of stuff. How yeah. long have you been with the CBS? Uh, three and a half years. You going to hang around a while? Yeah, of course. All right, good. All right. <laughs> nice you. And give me your pronunciation. What's your name? Iganis. Iganis. Yes. You're the first Iganis I've ever met. The one and only. <laughs> uh, no one's going to confuse you with anybody with a similar name, are they? No, I'm kind of like Madonna. Not exactly. Yeah. Got it. And he got it. You're cute. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And then, All right. All right. And, that, and, that's, and that's probably the last time you're going to hear it pronounced that way, too, from Scott. Like hey, hey, hey who's love. that iguana lady? No, I don't say that. That's not me. Make her feel bad. It is exactly 9.03. Louie Louie's about to drive me crazy. <laughs> Cause he's a he's one of these guys that always thinks it's got to be like right on time everything. That's his job. Oh, man. <laughs> isn't isn't that odd? I think I I, I love Dan Taylor. He's a right. good man. Yeah. Great, but he trained you wrong. <laughs> he messed yeah. up your training yeah. here. There's no doubt about that. Nine oh three. Over to Joe, uh, whatever you call the traffic. Right. Well, we'll figure that out today. Right. We'll have it ready tomorrow. We'll be all set tomorrow with Iguana. <laughs> South, yeah, I told you. <laughs> South Bank Garden State Parkway at 149. Scott Shannon in the morning. CBS FM. You know, you, you make me feel so good inside. <laughs> you are listening to a brand new broadcast. The Shannon in the Morning Radio Show on CBS FM, and I am fully trained and licensed by the Federal Communications Commission whoa, 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 to do whoa. this job. <laughs> and it's been a free for all this morning. Oh, man. People Crazy. calling from all over the place. Checking in from Hollywood is a guy that has not had a wink of sleep all night long. He is the famous host of Access Hollywood. He is. Billy Bush. Got in, my man. Good Hi. morning. How you doing, partner? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Happy that uh, we've got CBS FM and Shannon. I got to tell you what, I Joe, you may not you remember Joe Nolan, right? Oh yeah. Hey Billy, how you doing, man? Oh, you pimped Joe. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, one time when we were uh, just getting started. Mm -hmm. Billy came up and did the morning show. This is like 22 years ago. Not that old, is he? he said, Billy, oh, yeah. Billy, you ought to hang around here. He said, I can't work with you two. I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs> and look at him. He's a superstar. Superstar. I uh, He left a message <laughs> on my phone the other night. He says, I can't talk to you anymore. I got to go have... I'm having dinner with Tara Lipinski and Johnny Weir. Oh, oh, well, yeah, we hired him. A common... You what? We hired him for the Oscars. You're kidding me. <laughs> yeah, after they, well, they were such a sensation in Sochi. Figured what was the next act. I'll tell and, you what. And uh, we took him a week later, and so we had him with us yesterday. My God, you wouldn't believe the amount of clothing that guy goes through. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Gaga has less clothing than this man. You know, you know what's funny is I don't think anybody expected them to be that good. They were Olympic skaters, Deb. Yeah, I know. And they did. I turned them on, and I, yeah, I, I didn't watch as much of the Olympics as you did because you had to work right. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I turned them on, and I saw them, and I thought, my God, they really have good chemistry. 
Yeah, unbelievably. And they, they're they the ones that said, uh, you know, they fought for themselves to be a pair over there. NBC was like, ah, I don't think so. That seems a little, you, you, you need a little more help. And uh, so they made them test a few times. And when they did, they said, okay, this, this is great. You do what you want. We're talking to Billy Bush from Access Hollywood. Billy, I know you're going to have your show. The way they do this, in case you, you don't know this, I mean, Billy knows, but they they go on like they do their whole show at midnight. And they tape it, and then they go home and they go to bed. They're in bed about three. You're supposed to be in bed three or four in the morning, right, Billy? Yeah, no, but for me, it was, uh, you wouldn't believe what I had to do yesterday. Since we, we, we decided because of the live show that we do in the morning not to do the late night taping. Oh, you didn't I, tape. I, Scott, you're not going to believe what happened what? to me. I went to the red carpet. I did the red carpet, and when it was done, I get to the end. I end up. Say 9.30, dressed as the biker dude in the village people, in a club in Santa Monica. What? There's a perfectly good reason for this. It's my daughter's best friend's bat mitzvah, oh. and I can't miss it. So I'm there, and the father asked me, will you play the biker with the bad stash? I said, oh, my God. Sure enough, that's what I was doing at 9.30. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe this? I had to come back and catch up on the Oscars when I got home. <laughs> that's the first time. But I did catch John Travolta. Oh, oh my gosh. That was gosh. unfortunate. What happened? John Travolta, Scott, gets up and says, he decides, I guess, not to go to rehearsal for the Oscars and says, whatever it is, don't worry, I'll just do my introduction when I get there. He gets up on stage and he says, Time for the wonderful performance. Uh, please welcome the wickedly talented, the one and only. <gasps> and he sees the name in the teleprompter and he freezes and kicks out something to the nature of uh, Adele De Dezim. Oh and with that, Adina Menzel walks out. Oh the look on her face that says, what? <laughs> Who's Adele Dezim? Oh, my God. What was dope a... did that to me, right? Yeah. yeah. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Got to know Adina Menzel. I mean, Adina yeah. Menzel, so, right? So you, so you actually attended the bar mitzvah and then came back. So you're going to do? Yeah. Are, you, are you doing the daytime show live today? Oh yeah! In fact, uh, it begins in an hour and an hour and forty minutes. And yeah. you don't have access in the can? No access is not oh. in the can. Oh my wow. goodness! Well, you you know, we used to do it all the all the time like that, but not now. Oh, all right. Well, I I know they they I know they did uh, Regis and I'm sorry Kelly and Michael last night. Really? Oh yeah, they did that in the can. That's already done. That's how they do it. They do it at night and then they run it the next day. And it's a it's a mess for the production crew because they got to rush to get it all done. Oh, I've done it a million times that way, and it is brutal. You get home at about one o'clock in the morning. All right. So tonight the Access Hollywood Oscar episode. One where the well, you're going to look good today on the live show. You get the big bags under your eyes, right? Mm. They got beautiful Louis Vuittons under under each, under each eye. <laughs> you know what we did last night? You know the pizza guy, the pizza delivery guy? Yeah. yeah. Here's a great little story. So the pizza delivery guy comes out. This guy's already pretty polished. This is the way people have adjusted to the new Hollywood. By the time that guy got back to his pizza place, and he's a legitimate pizza delivery guy from Mamas and Papas. His name is Edgar. By the time he gets back to the pizza place, our people are already there. We're ready to interview him. Right. We're ready to have him on the live show You know, in the morning, have him deliver pizza, the whole program. Uh, got an agent. Th three, four other crews are there, and he wants money. He's like, I ain't going on camera unless you pay me. So he's wow. holding out. Good for Edgar, I guess. And I'm, I'm working as Edgar's agent, right? <laughs> yeah, Edgar's got so so. Somebody did pay him and locked him up. So when you'll see Edgar on TV somewhere today, and just know that Edgar's got himself a nice, sweet check for it. Tonight, he's got the new fat wallet, right? Oh yeah, they paid him up. Billy Bush, Access Hollywood tonight, and Access Hollywood Live. Thank you, buddy. I'll talk to you when you get some sleep. It is so good to hear you on the mighty CBS FM. Man, he's a fan. He's all, he loves his station. He loves you. you got to come by when you do the show here, because I see you all the time. You, you, you're in here a lot. That is a guarantee. See you, Billy. Bye. BB wow. Billy Bush. He's great. Oh, he's, you know something? That guy, is. he has got a big set. I'll tell you what. Said of what? He Set. had no experience whatsoever in radio. Yeah. And he just went around knocking on doors like John Bon Jovi did.
until some radio station in D.C. hired him. He didn't work his way up like most of us, like Joe and me and the rest of the yeah. crew. Yeah. He just started in D.C. and then he just... Yep. Well, he's got the name, you know. Well, yeah, he's but like he's, like, nephew, he's right? like a ninth cousin yes. of a yeah. bush. Yeah. He's yeah. not well, really... He's not like, he didn't oh, go I to the... I thought he was a nephew. If he goes to the ranch in Texas, they, they arrest him. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> but, I mean, the guy, he just he didn't take no for an answer. That's great. Right. Yeah. Now, he's really determined. He knew what he wanted to do. He's good. And he's he's, he's gotten really good. good. He yeah. didn't start that way. Really? Believe me. Okay. Mm. It is exactly 920 with Scott, Deborah Rodriguez, Mr. G, and how about this dude, Joe Nolan with CBS FM Traffic. Sawmill northbound north of the Deconic at 921. I'm Joe Nolan with Traffic on CBS FM. Serving the universe from the greatest city in the world. Scott Shannon in the morning on WCBS FM and HD1 New York. Always on radio.com. Can you hear me? Yes. You can actually hear me? I can hear you. I'm the new DJ here. You're the new DJ? Yeah, Scott. <laughs> oh, are you call Hi. Are you calling CBS FM? I am. Why why are you calling? Because you guys have a contest. What's oh, tell me about tell Deborah about the contest. She doesn't know. How does that, how does that how's the contest work? I guess we listen to your radio station and we hear the uh, two songs in the morning, we win. Did somebody tell you to call or you do this all on your own? I do this all on our own. And our whole office listens to y'all. I guess we better get to know you. What's your name? My name is Bree. Bree, where's your office? We are in Elizabeth. In New Jersey? In New Jersey. Did you? We were talking to some guy from New Jersey this morning. Did you hear Where that? Are you? Yeah, uh, bon, John Bon Jovi. <laughs> I love him. Yeah, he was uh, he was on for about twenty minutes this morning. He wouldn't shut up. <laughs> I love that guy. Well, listen, I I, I got to go. Uh, I just want to tell you, you got a thousand dollars. Yay! I love you guys. One thousand dollars. It's a CBS oh. FM thousand dollar double play. We'll do it again for people who aren't Bree. <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon with Broadway Bill Lee, 4 p.m. hour. Congratulations, Bree. Thank you. Thank you. Kaboom. <laughs> Scott Shannon. Scott Shannon. CBS FM. Well, I'm fairly happy with the way the broadcast is going. So oh far, God. no major disasters, right, nope. Deborah? I don't think so. Other than you not know a darn thing about the, for the contest. contest. I'm problem. learning. I'm learning. I'll know by tomorrow. <laughs> and, our, and our new producer, Louis Louis, is doing a great job. Yeah, Staten really Island nice. College. Yeah. yeah. Go, Louis. Louis, what did you study over there anyway? <laughs> Journalism. <laughs> Journalism. Well, what are you doing here? <laughs> to, to prepare you. And I'm really getting to know uh, Mr. G. How's mm -hmm. that? <laughs> well, I'm usually napping by now. <laughs> yeah, see, here's the thing. He he gets on, does the weather a couple times, and he's out. He's out of there. Well, those days are over. So you do, don't you? You do the ten o'clock. Last time I checked. Yeah, I do the five. I do the ten, and I'm supposed to be on the air in about thirty minutes. Other than that, are you are, serious? No, one o'clock. I'll be oh, okay. on today. Okay. Do you know? Do you know our old friend Bill Evans? You know, I see Bill every now and then, but uh, it's not a, you're not a fan. Is that what you're saying? I don't know where that one went. <laughs> huh? Went from be. now and then to president of his fan club. <laughs> he's, nice. he's, he's, a, he's a buddy of ours. We yeah, know good. He seems uh, like a good guy. Although uh, he has not called us uh -huh. to say hi. Is he no. allowed? He may not be allowed. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be it. And as I mentioned before, forgive me if I screw up the call letters a time or two. Because if I drop a PLJ in there or whatever. What? Hello? Well, well, you didn't. You haven't, no, you haven't yet. I'm You're just fine. saying accidentally. That doesn't oh. count if you say it on purpose. Okay. All right. Because I worked in the same building, the same station with the same guy for about 23 years in a room together. Mm -hmm. We understand them. So it may take me some time to get going here. 
But right. so far, by the way, another thing we got going on here today, I was just talking to uh, Jim Ryan. Mm -hmm. He's the program director mm. of the whole operation. Mm. So if this thing sucks, it's his fault. Right. <laughs> but today on CBS and we're, uh, CBS FM, we're showcasing the biggest hits from the year 1983. Okay. Because that's the year when I first hit. The airwaves in New York City. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll tell you, we got a great staff of people. I told you I was so excited about working with Broadway Bill Lee. And another legend mm -hmm. is coming on in, what, about 30 minutes from right now. Here he is. Dan Taylor. Dan, you still got your voice? You still got that big, deep voice? Uh, <laughs> See, I wished I had this voice. If I yeah. had this voice, <laughs> I'd be awesome. No, I, I, I tell you, I thought, ah. you, I thought you were Don Belucas at first. I didn't know. Nah, that, was, <laughs> that was a warm-up name. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> so you, got, you got everything laid out for 10 a.m.? I do. And listen, i got to tell you something. I heard you on the air say you didn't have something this morning. You forgot to bring or you didn't have it. You what didn't have I know what it the is. The bell. Oh, you my God. The bell. You're I'm right. Gonna, I'm going to pass the oh. baton. <laughs> Scott, and give you my bell, and I'm going to let you hit it. There you go. Yes, that's a perfect present. That's great, man, because every so often you need to emphasize a that's word right. like that's right. Dan Taylor coming up next, like that. Uh, <laughs> I was going to go get one after the show. He Dan Taylor sure. stole your thunder. Yeah, there yes. you go. By the way, did anyone in the room grow up in Pittsburgh? No, I didn't. No. You guys? Mm, no. Well, Brooklyn, Brooklyn. It, there are, there may be people listening to grew up in Pittsburgh, and if you listen to radio there when you were a kid, you might know the name Porky Chedwick. Oh, oh. sure. He was a big DJ in town on the R and B station, but he was one of those kind of guys that was so hip. A lot of the white kids would listen to him, oh. and uh, he passed away over the weekend. He was ninety six wow. years How about old. That? Wow. And it's funny, too, because when he retired, he went down to Florida, and I think he lived there for about, I don't know, six months, and he said, this ain't for me. <laughs> and he came back to Pittsburgh, and he was doing, like, you know, uh, sock hops and things like that, but he was a great one. He used to call himself um, the platter-pushing papa. I like mm. that. In radio, he's legendary, Platter. right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Dan knows him. Okay. Of course yeah. he does. And I'll tell you who else is a big fan. Do you ever watch PBS and those specials? Mm -hmm. Yeah. T.J. Lubinsky is a guy who is one of those rare people who, young, didn't grow up in the doo-wop era, uh -huh. but knows all about the, you know, the oldies from the 50s and 60s. He does the PBS specials, you know, the sensational 60s and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, coming up in about five minutes from right now, mm -hmm. we're going to talk, and we just talked to Dan, who actually, how long did you do the morning show here? Uh, seven years? Seven years? Total of nine years. We're going to talk to another guy who did the morning show on this radio station and, and didn't didn't quite last that long, however. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Don't you worry about nothing. Hall of Fame. 1983. 1983. The year that Scott Shannon arrived on the airwaves in New York City. So, today, in the CBS FM Hall of Fame. Songs from 1983. <laughs> Uh, Scott Shannon snuck out to little DJ's room, and this is Dan Taylor taking over for a few minutes here on CBS FM. We're going to have a lot of fun in the Hall of Fame. We're going to have a lot of fun at midday. But right, can I bring my bell one more time? Ah, there you go. I passed it over to Scott just moments ago. And CBS FM, we're doing songs for 1983. People are not used to seeing me around here during the daylight. I'm getting all these reactions here. <laughs> Say what I mean? 1983, Scott put a little station on the air across the river. We're going to share some music from that year like this from Duran Duran. I'm definitely back in the New York groove. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful welcome today. I didn't know what the hell this was going to turn out to so be. so much fun. It is fun, isn't it, Deborah? Yeah, I'm, you made it fun. And by the way, those guys from Duran Duran nearly killed me back in the 80s. Really? Oh, those, those guys ran hard. I used to try to keep up with them. No, no way. No. It's good you didn't. Cause if you I know. ever write a book, I guess I got to wait till a couple of them pass away. If I, <laughs> if I ever write a book, Mister G, yeah, you're gonna read it because there's a lot in there about those guys. I'll Hope be the, first now, to read it. Now, which one of the tailors ran you uh, ran you ragged? Uh, not the pretty one. Not John. Uh, Andy. 
Andy. All right. Mm. Andrew Here. Taylor. You never heard the okay. story about it? me pushing him down the street in a, in a grocery cart? No. At about 3 a.m.? No, I never heard that one. Oh, that's a bad one. I thought I heard all of them. <laughs> Is there any pictures? Any? As before, I found the non-smoking meetings. Oh, boy. Oh. It was a rough one. I mentioned earlier that we would talk to a former morning show host. The CBS FM. Now, it's not Dan Taylor, because Dan's here, and everybody's like, well, you're going to get Harry Harrison on. No, okay. I don't know Harry, but I, he's fine. I'm talking about a guy who was also a big pop star, and all of a sudden, it kind of fell into place. Here we come, walk down the street. Please say good morning to Mr. Mickey Dolan, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Hey. How you doing, Scott? <laughs> He's <laughs> up. The SFM. He is up. Now it's you. Good morning. You know, I Weather thought. in the Triborough Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you did a pretty good job when you were here. Well, thanks. I had a great time. I tell you, it was the toughest, one of the toughest jobs I've ever had. I always had a respect for, for people doing radio. I've always loved the, the medium. But, boy, I'll tell you, I had no idea how tough it is. People don't know. People don't know how tough it is to do what, what you guys do, what we, what we do, what I did. It, and it's a wonderful job. Congratulations. It's so great to hear you back on the air. Well, I think the hard part for you is just getting here. Because you're a late, you're, you're a, I know you, I've known, I've known you, I've known you for a while, and you're, a, you're kind of a 10 a.m., 11 a.m. kind of guy to get up. Yes, you hit the nail on the head. Mm -hmm. So that was that. that that was, uh, yeah, that, that was tough. But, but also just, uh, just being, uh, a, uh, you know what, I found the toughest challenge as an actor, singer, uh, performer, you know, doing uh, TV films, musical theater, right. recording. Uh, so, you know, you, you get used to all my life. I got used to using all of my senses, <laughs> all of my tools, my skills as, as an actor, facial expressions. Uh, your, your uh, hand, your, your gestures, uh -oh. your, your body movements, you know, your, your, obviously your voice, um, but many other uh, uh, skills, both visual and, and otherwise. But uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, on the radio, there's only one. It's just your voice, and you have to convey every every single thing all your emotions you have to convey every thought every nuance through your voice and your voice only and that is a real challenge and people don't know how difficult that is you of course being the master well and mr g hasn't learned that yet because every time he does the forecast he's got his, his face all going every which way <laughs> and he's waving his arms like he's got a map behind him or something right and, and mickey i want you to know that scott is my biggest fan wait till you hear what the other people in here are saying <laughs> You know, it's funny about me. Well, is Mr. G there? Yeah, yeah. right here. Of course he is. Well, he hey, Mr. G, how you doing, buddy? But Mickey, I, I just, uh, I just want you to know, you brought me back to when I came down here and you were here and you told me how tough it was. When you were finished with me, I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny about Mickey because. God, how many years ago was the were the monkeys oh, on TV? God. And yeah. one time he was in town. And he, he likes to play golf, so I said, let's get together and we'll play around round of golf. So I took him out to the course where I play. I'm talking about grown men going, can I have your autograph? Wow. <laughs> People, I mean, it was a mess. I said, we're playing golf. I, pro <laughs> I promise you, no one's going to bother you here. And, all and I had a friend of mine, was, and he kept saying, what was it like when you had that episode? With someone? I said, how do you know all this crap? Right. People remember <laughs> those shows. I grew up with him. I was in love with Mickey and the Monkeys when I was like five years old. Don't say that to him. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I was like 15. Sorry. Now, <laughs> you... And you still get around. I mean, you're doing the Monkeys Convention. That's coming up this month, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming up uh, a couple of weekends on the 14th, 15th, 16th at, uh, in New Jersey at uh, Meadowlands there. And uh, we'll be doing that. I, I'm also coming back. I think last time I, I talked to you, I was in town doing B.B. King. Right. I'm doing that again in July. They brought me back. I'm going to be there, I think, July 30th at B.B. At King's. I hope to see you there. And uh and I'm 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 in and out of town a lot. I'm I'm tr I'm hoping to, to get back on Broadway. Some interest in me in me doing another show there. So 
We'll, we'll see. Hopefully. What, what did you do last time you were on Broadway? Uh, I did uh, a couple of shows. I did Grease. Well, that was a number of years ago. Right. I did Aida. That counts. I Aida, the uh, the Elton John Tim Rice musical, and then I did um, uh, I did Pippin, the national tour of Pippin a, a few years ago, and I just got back from the UK doing a hairspray in the West End. Wow, you do! I tell you what, you don't give up. You're not afraid to work, are you? No, I, I love it. I you know I tried retiring once. I was suicide, uh, suicidal, and I just decided it's not for me. I gotta I gotta keep on uh, keep on going. And by the way, when we when we do the monkey convention, uh, we're doing it for a number of great causes that I want to throw in there. One is the American Cancer Society. Uh, uh, I'm there with all my children. All four of my children are there, and we're going to be donating to a number of different of their favorite oh, charities, the Clinton Foundation. Bright Horizons, the preschool organization. And the thing that sort of started it all off last year with a convention was the Davy Jones Equine Memorial Fund. After Davy passed, uh, his kids started a, a fund for retired racehorses. Davy was a big, big fan of, uh, of horse racing and had a bunch of horses himself. So we're going to be giving uh, uh, a lot of donations to a bunch of our favorite charities. Mickey, Try to come out and see us if you can. Mickey's going to be at the Monkeys Convention, Hilton Hotel, East Rutherford, March 14th, 15th, and 16th. Mike and uh, Peter will be there with him. And B.B. Uh, King's on what did say, July 30th. And you're also yep. going to be at the Ridgefield Playhouse in yep. Ridgefield, Connecticut, August the 1st. And let's okay. not forget the, uh, I don't know what this is, the Atlantic County Institute of Technology. Is that a, <laughs> is that a concert? I'm everywhere. No, I'm I'm lecturing on quantum physics. Oh, perfect, <laughs> perfect. I tell you, as soon as the snow melts, we'll get back out on the uh, course. All right. You got it. One more time. He is Mickey Dolan. Oh, by the Mickey, way, next you. time you also got to come by and sit in the chair again with us. I'd love to. Thanks so much, guys. Congratulations, Mickey Dolan, CBS FM. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, former radio DJ here on CBS FM. Let's hear it for my friend M Mickey Dolan. Dolan. Dolan's. You know what? I always almost said Nismith. I'm sorry. I'll name. say thanks to our staff this morning, our broadcast crew on the big show, Deborah Rodriguez. Thank you, girl. Oh, so pleasure. Damn. A pleasure. Mr. Thank G making a rare <laughs> personal appearance. <laughs> Back to the bathroom for you. Joe Nolan, CBS Traffic Watch. Good to have you, buddy. Yep. Our show producer, Louie Louie. John Bon Jovi checking in this morning. Robert Lamb from Chicago. Deborah Norville from Inside Edition. Rob Astorino, possible new governor of the great state of New York. Terry Lundgren, CEO of Macy's. Billy Bush from Access Hollywood. Cousin Brucie. Dr. Oz and Mickey Dolenz. Man. Great. From the monkeys. Remember him? Yeah, of course. <laughs> he was just on. I know. <laughs> How about that? I waited until the very last <laughs> break before I screwed anything up. <laughs> Dan Taylor is coming up next. Right. With any luck, my contract will be extended to tomorrow morning. <laughs> We're back at 6 a.m. Have a great day. And remember, we love you. Bye, buckaroos.